Hi, I'm Steve Miller and welcome to this latest video how I use DxO Photo Lab to edit my uh, images. At this time I just thought I'd go, uh, I'd show you how I use um, Photo Lab to blur background sometimes in, in images. This is the sort of look I'm going for, I mean I didn't have to use this technique on this image because this is this is like in camera, um, I was down low, quite a long focal length of 4.5 so the the background's naturally blurred but this is the sort of image it just makes the the animal pop out of the photo so i just thought i'd show how you can sort of try and replicate this look uh, using uh, photo lab and a couple of quite easy techniques really so the image i'm going to work on i'm going to try and blur the background a little bit in in this uh, for another photo of a hair so first thing I'd do uh, with this, I'm just going to go in and, and I've it was taken at ISO 800, so not too high ISO. So I've got a preset for uh, my animal images with the, that are taken at low ISO. So I first apply that. So what that's going to do, if you go into local adjustments, it's created a, a mask for the animal, a mask for the background. It's just done a couple of things. It's added a bit of like a contrast and sharpening things to the uh, to the animal and the background. It has um, will have actually uh, if we're going to the background minus ten on the micro contrast. Not a lot done on that. Um, so that's the first thing I do. I always have that. I just have that set. It just makes. Um, editing quite easy if you have presets especially with the eye masks now so I'm gonna go in I'm just gonna notice this needs does need leveling so I'll just get that a little bit so it just looks a bit a little leveler and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna crop so I'll have a quick look I'll just crop in a little bit tighter on this I'm just gonna take that the easiest way to get rid of that I could use the heel tool but I'll just get rid of it I'll just crop it out it's a bit distracting in the background I'll just drop that crop down so right now we'll try and get into blurring the background and how I'm going to do that I'm going to use um, a gradient mask so a gradient filter so if I had a gradient filter and what I'm thinking is I want me my gradient to start just behind where the the hair is uh, if you look there i'm sort of thinking right I, I don't want to blur the grass and things too much because that's quite close to the hair so it wouldn't, wouldn't look natural so i'm thinking something like that obviously i don't want to blur the hair so i'm gonna to have to subtract the hair from that mask which is quite easy now with the ai masking if i just go to you add a sub mask and then if you go into the ai masking and this good minus the uh, whatever I pick so I'm subtracting that hair from that mask so there we go it's done quite a good job best way to have a look is going black and white ah, as you can see it for some reason it's uh, missed the hair so I'm going to do another add another mask brush I'm going to do a minus brush just on over the, the hair's eye there we go so it won't affect the hair at all now so that is the mask that I'm going to work on and for this one what I'm going to do I'm going to use make a contrast I'm going to just knock that right down as you can see that's blurring it's blurring the the background there if I, I help it it's it makes it more contrasty but what I find is when you if you're doing animal masks, I find the mica contrast is the best thing to use. I'll just show you why. If you go further down, there is a blur tool in the local adjustments which you could use. But I'll show you the reason why I don't on something like this. Because of the fur detail, as you can see there, just around the edges the blur is starting to affect the uh, the hair and its fur so 
shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Just added another uh, mask that I didn't mean to. So that is why I do not use the blur tool when I'm doing things like this. If you can see the um, the mica contrast doesn't affect as much so it, you know you, you can't really see it so I'll just show you I'll just turn that on and off that uh, mask that I've done so turn the local adjustments off so if you just look in this area this background it's just a slight blur it's put on it just takes away the distractions a little bit like I always say, you don't. I don't like to do too high, um, too much to make so it makes it look false. I mean, I could go in if I wanted to, maybe. And let's try if we just put a very slight little bit of blur, maybe just five, five or six. Yeah, see, it is still affecting the edge of that. Yeah, I, I don't like that. It is affecting. So I'll just use the mica contrast for that. I've got another example, and this one, it's a sports photo. Um, this is the sort of look we're going for. I mean, this one is taking the, the crowd in the back. The distance is you know, quite distant, quite a long way away, so it's naturally blurred. Uh, I've taken it at 325mm, which is like a 650mm on a full frame. I'm on a micro four thirds camera. So that's the sort of look we're going for. Um, this is the image I'm going to work on. I mean, I wouldn't do this uh, on the images that I take for the club, uh, but maybe if you've you're taking kids' sports, you know, your son's playing football, son or daughter's playing football, and uh, you want to take some distractions from the background, this is quite a good technique to do it. So I'll just show you how I'd uh, do it on this image. Same again, I've got a preset, this time Spark preset. And that's quite a bright day, so I'd use that preset. It just levels it up and just sort of lifted the shadows a little bit and just do, did a few little things on the preset, but that's not what this, what this video is about. Straight away I look and I think it's it's looking a little bit um, cool that so I will just knock the just warm it up a little bit and like I did last time I'm going to just going to do a, a crop on this image maybe something like that I mean to me you know that's a sort of image I could send to the newspaper they might use something like that and I wouldn't bother too much about the back, background being blurred but I've just thought I'd use this image just to show you how the technique can work on this. Um, so the same as last time, um, I'll be using a graduated filter and I'm sort of looking where I think I want the blur to start. So it's just behind the players, so I'd say about there. I'll just go back to the, the normal masking way so I can see things. So I'd say about there, and as you can see, I've done it. I'm looking at an angle to the towards the players, so the the out of focus distance would be at an angle as well. So I'm just doing something like that. And again, I want to subtract the players from that mask, so I'd have to see so yeah, a new sub mask, and I'm going in the AI. I'm gonna subtract an area this time, and let's hope it picks these players up okay. Doesn't look like it's done too bad a job. If I just go in, it's easier to see in the black. All right, so we've picked up a bit of the linesman there. So what I'll do, I'll add another sub mask. I think I'll just do this one with I just want to add to that mask with the brush. So I'll just should I say subtract from that mask with a brush I won't bother too much I mean you can see yeah, it has picked a little bit of the background up. I won't bother too much I'll just show you how how it works so let's see we'll go on this time we're going to use the blur tool uh, 
never go too high. I mean, you could go to a hundred and, you know, it, it's, whoa, it's a mess. I usually find about 20 is quite a good, around the 20 mark is quite good for the blur on this. And you can just see it, it's just blurred the crowd and I'll just turn that on and off. So we've gone from there without the uh, the blur mask to there. So it's just made them players jump out from the um, from the crowd there. Uh, if you haven't if you haven't got a pro lens, you haven't got a two point eight a four hundred mil two point eight. You know you're you're working with a a seventy to three hundred five point six lens or something. Something this could um, this technique could sort of help you get that professional lens look. Um, so I just thought I'd share that with you and hopefully that helps but you know you, you just have to make sure you, you, you don't blur the whole thing you have to you know make sure you get this plane of focus right um, just to make it look a bit more realistic um, thanks for watching I've just remind you that I've um, I've got a discount code Steve Miller 15 you can get 15% off any of the DxO products. Um, right, thanks for watching. Bye.